All right, so welcome to part 10 of Learn Go. And in this video, we're going to be covering maps. So maps, the concept of maps are synonymous with dictionaries in Python, or perhaps you're familiar with hash tables from Java or something like that. So maps, dictionaries, hash tables, all kind of describe the same type of data structure. And maps is the keyword and the name that they give to this data structure in Go. So let me just go ahead and go down here to our main function. And I'm just going to say, in a comment, maps are similar to Python dictionary, i.e. hash table, etc. So the way that we can specify, so we can specify a key value pair as a map in Go, we can say, let's define a map as m. So we'll say colon equals m colon equals make, which we saw from the slice video from before. And then we'll say map so we're going to make a map and then we're going to say map of string. So this is the key that we're going to determine from the map and then the, the value. So is the value that we're going to have in this case for this example will be an integer. So we'll go ahead and start defining some key value pairs for this particular map. We can index into a map in a similar way that we index into an array in, in Go or a slice or anything like that. So we'll say M of A. So we'll define that key value in the map that we've just defined. We'll say the corresponding value of this key is equal, let's say, to zero. And then we can define, let's say, another key entry in this map. Let's define that as B. Again, the key in this case is a string, and the value in this case is an int. So that's our key value types, our string int key value in this particular example. So the key for B, let's just go ahead and give this a value of one. So we can go ahead and print that out to the screen. Let's say format.print line m, save that, give the terminal a clear, and then we'll say uh, go run 10 underscore maps.go. And then we see that we have this name map here, with, which is specifying the output that it's a map. And then we see the open square brace, and then the key, and then the value separated by a colon, and again the key colon value. So that's the way that maps are displayed as output to the terminal in Go. So the, let's say the, and I, I guess I should put a comment here, printing value, or actually I'll leave that comment for the next line. I'll say, let me get rid of these stupid red things here. There we go. So, oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> my life is pain. Okay, so let's say you can print out the value of a specific key. So you can print the value of a specific key. So for instance, you can say format.println m of a. So we're, we're asking what is the value stored at the key a in this map that we defined. So it should be zero, the way that we defined the map. So indeed, the value of entry a is zero. So that's, that's good. So we can also use the len function, the length function for a dictionary in the same way that we used it for slices and arrays. So we could say len function is overloaded, let's say, to work with maps. So we can say format.println len of m. If we do that, well, we should get two because there's two entries in this. There's this entry and this entry here, so we get two. And we can also delete elements in the dictionary. So we can specify the key in which we wish to delete from the map. So we can, for instance, say, let's say, remove key pair uh, from map, which can be done with delete keyword, delete keyword. So that can be done like this. So we can delete we're going to specify what we want to notice how delete is highlighted there. We want to delete from M and the thing that we want to delete in M is with key, let's say a, let's just say that we want to delete that from the map M. And if we do that, if we print out the resulting map after we've deleted that print len of M, go ahead and see what we get. We should just see B. So our initial map was a with zero B with one and we deleted a from that map and we just have B one. So we've got that. So what else can we do? We can define a map in a more concise manner, just as we did with arrays, just as we did with slices, as long as we know what entries should be in the map. So another way to initialize a map, if you 
already know the values, keys ahead of time. So we can say, M, let's call this other map M2. Let's say colon equals, and then we'll say map. And we'll also have this be string int key value pair. So we'll say string and then int. And then we can use the curly braces to define the key value pairs. So open, close. And let's say the first entry, we'll say val1. So it's a string. And then the value, let's say, is 1. And then for the second one, let's just say val2. And then the value there will be uh, 2. So this should really, I guess this should be key 2. And this should be key 1. OK, so we can go ahead and print that out. So we can say format print line m2. Print that out there. So we get this. So we get a, a new map object, key one, which is the key, the value one, and then key two, and the corresponding value is two there. So we can also do something like this. So we can say, we can check whether or not the value, uh, we can get the value of a specific index for a key and whether the value is present. So we can do something like this to determine that. So we can check. We can get the value of a specific key in a dictionary and whether or not the value is present in the dictionary. We'll say is val present. And we can get these returned from colon equals m of b. So for instance, what I'm doing here is this, I'm accessing this thing here, the, the map at index b. And this is going to return two things. It's going to return the value stored in at key v key b, which should be 1. And then it's going to give me a boolean, which is the second parameter here. And it's going to let me know if that thing is actually even present. So if the thing's actually present, it will return a true, which in this case we know it is. And otherwise, it will return a false if that particular key is not present in this map. So let's go ahead and say format.printline val. So we should see there a, a 1, because that's the value for key b. And let's go ahead and say format.printval, uh, sorry, print len is val present and we should see true let's go ahead and print those out so we see the corresponding value for the key b is one and indeed the value itself is present let's go ahead and keep going with that uh, idea so we can also check if something is not present so let's try we deleted a we deleted the key a from l uh, from m so we can say val or we can just say underscore in this case underscore is just a placeholder so if we don't care about the value let's say we don't care about the value we can just put in a placeholder which will just be nothing so we don't have to worry about using that value because again in go if you don't print out or use that that value if we were if we were not to print this out to the screen we would get an error so for instance if i just commented this out try to run it again we would get an error it says that that val is declared but it's not used so maybe we don't care about that val we don't want to print it out to the screen in which case we can just use a placeholder var variable for that particular place there so we don't care about value but we do care to check if the particular thing is present so we can say is val present let's say colon equals m of a so we're checking if the key with key a is present in this map m and basically this is val present well and we probably should call it is val present too because we don't want to redeclare that as a second um, we don't want to overwrite this because we've we've already declared a, var a variable with this name so we don't want to declare another variable with the same name goes not going to like that either so i've declared another variable checking is present is val present too and that will return a boolean as to whether or not this key is present in this map so this should return false so let's go ahead and verify that format.println is val present too so we're checking if the key a is present in the map and that is false false because that is not present in the map m because we deleted it on line 13 there so let's see, we can also, uh, I guess that's pretty much it actually for maps. That's all I really wanted to go over. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video on maps. If you have any questions or comments or anything else, please don't hesitate to leave them below. The code will be hosted on my GitHub page and that is the link to that is going to be provided in the description. And thanks again for taking the time to watch and I'll see you in the next video.